Welcome to La Pive Let's Talk. I appreciate you guys for joining us. Today's topic we're going to be discussing women should be financially taken care of in a relationship. Your woman shouldn't have to worry about paying a damn thing. If you cannot afford to take care of a woman completely, don't date or pursue a woman until you can. The woman is the price. Pay for it. Uh, I was sent this. I was for this uh, screenshot and this came off the shave room. So we want to open it up for discussion. How you feel about that, B Nix? Uh, I don't know. Low key, I feel like I'm the prize too. Like not to <laughs> not to be acting silly about it, but I, I think that it's I get it. But I feel like it still should be like both ways. I mean, hey, I don't mind being able to spend bread or you know su support you know my lady, but at the same time, it's like I also want to feel like that person is not using me, and it becomes one sided. So the thing is, and the thing is, let's be real, like. It's not just about finances. We talking about how you could financially support. There are people out there that just look to not even be with somebody, but just date them off the fact that like, hey, I need somebody to take me out for dinner on X amount of days out the week and stuff. So the thing is, I get it. But I want to say that a woman should also feel that the man is the prize, too. It shouldn't be one sided. What about you, Carmen? I'm sorry. I, I let me take a step back. Let me introduce. Yeah, we you do have no a couple. No intros, bro. No intro. Look at you. <clears throat> yeah, let's get right I, to I'll it. I'll just ask for that. All right. So you guys know B Nix. Uh, he is one third of La Pive Let's Talk. We also have Carmen joining us. Welcome, Carmen. Thank you. Thank I know. you. Miss Carmen. Miss Carmen. I'll probably just ask again. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have my buddy Anton. He's calling there from Detroit. Appreciate you for joining us as well. Boo. What's happening, fam? Uh, we know you love us. We know you Boo. love us. Hey, man. We seen Last Dance. No, everybody hates Detroit. <laughs> they don't. They, they don't and they hurt. They only hate it because they never was us. That, that's oh, the only man. thing. Let me guess. You still be wearing Isaiah Thomas jersey and stuff, too. You know it. Actually, <laughs> I just linked up with Isaiah probably like two weeks ago because he got a new champagne. Oh, I yeah. got season tickets for the Pistons. And his champagne is really, really dope. It's really dope. It definitely is. Are you kosher so? I, I Ain't like season tickets name? like three hundred dollars for season tickets. <laughs> nah, nah. Two hundred. If you if you check my my stories, I mean I'm front row. I'm right on the floor, so mine's uh, yeah. a little bit more in the five figures. But it's champagne is dope. It's called Sherlin, Sherlon Sherlin. Champagne. It's really good. It's it's not that expensive. It's like if you go get it from you know whatever the location is on the website, it's usually about. Forty-five dollars a bottle, and then they got the higher end one that goes for like a hundred and something. So, oh, that's good. I'm about to try it. It's really good too. Okay, no, gonna... no, uh, no, no headaches, no hangovers the next day. Oh, you know all about it. it. You know <laughs> all about it. Hey, I'll be an Anton with the casual plug and stuff. You know, okay. <laughs> he must yeah. be a brand ambassador. Of some yeah, I know, right, buddy? Hit <laughs> us with the casual <laughs> plug. Like it's like he lit this. Like, oh, that ain't nothing. You know, no, you know what? Because I, I don't drink wine. <laughs> I don't drink wine at all. Um, but I love champagne, and and she she know all about it. Carmen know about it, but it's probably <laughs> the best champagne on the market. Honestly, real talk. Yeah, that's dope. I don't got no champagne in my crib, man. And for it to be black owned, like that's that's what makes it even more. Dope. Yeah, he owned it a hundred percent. He's not a partner or nothing. He owned it a hundred percent. He owned the the grapes, the farm, everything like that. So it's pretty dope. Okay, yeah. that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you guys informing the group about that wine, that champagne. I apologize. Yeah. But back to the topic, women should be financially taken care of in relationships. Carmen, you was about to chime in. Um, so I do agree with the Nick that um, guys are the prize too. Um, I do think that if a guy is not able to financially um, at least set the standard. I believe that what you start, you should be able to finish or at least elevate, right? So if you start out, you know, with this uh, perception or you, you display that you can take care of a woman, like you have to be able to consistently do that. So your actions surrounding it has to follow what it is that you start. Personally, um, I think that speaks to the individual's love language, right? And how that money piece comes into, in, into practice. Um, you got some people, like you said, that, you know, they hungry and they'd rather go out to eat versus cooking. I'm different. You know, I'd rather have a home cooked meal versus 
wasting my time with someone that I'm not interested in just to eat. Like I could feed myself. So um, I just think it depends on where a person is in their life and in their finances that is kind of going to shape their perception of whether or not a, a woman should be taken care of solely. Do I like nice things? Do I like a man to be able to provide? Absolutely. 100%. Do I think I'm the prize? Times 10. <laughs> but I'm not going to um, entertain someone for the mere fact of feeling like I got to eat tonight. That's yeah. that's not something I'm going to do. But do it happen? Absolutely. And and do I think that women should be taken care of? Yeah. But I think women take care of men in a whole different in a whole different way. And once you kind of put that out there that, OK, this is one of the attributes that you bring to the table, to the relationship, then, yeah, a woman's going to multiply that. At least she should. At least she should. Um, so then that's where you guys come into play as far as feeling like you're the prize, too. Yeah, we're going to show you you the prize based off of what you show us. That's good. All right, Anton, what about yourself? How you feel about this? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of guys today displaying or taking care of women in any shape, fashion, or form. And I'm going to just tell you why. Number one, if you're looking at it from a traditional perspective, like how things used to be, yeah, that makes sense. But uh, as it relates to how things have evolved and changed in society, women want to, you know, they want their say so too. They want to be equal partners and all of that. And I just believe that you can't have the good without the other side. Like if you want to be an equal partner, then you got to participate on the negative side too, right? You got to, if you want to live that lifestyle, if you want everything to be, I want to be on the same level as a guy. I want to make the same money as a guy. I want all of this then you can't have higher expectations for him than you have for yourself. Now, as it relates to it, looking at it from a guy's perspective, I don't even think guys should be dating until they got their money right. I don't think you should be chasing chicks. You should be chasing checks. Like You should be really looking to put yourself in a great space, not only financially, but you should look to understand who it is that you are, how you want your life to go. And then if you are the man that you're supposed to be, the woman will naturally follow you. But at the same time, you got to set the standards. So it's a catch 22, depending on the circumstance and the situation that you're talking about. I think society has, has changed the perception of how relationships are supposed to go so much that you can't adhere to that standard by which a man should always take care of a woman. It's dependent upon who that woman is and, and what the dynamic of the relationship is. I don't even believe in, in regular dating. Like, I don't believe that you, I don't even believe that somebody can claim somebody unless they truly marry. Like, she not yours. At any point, she can just leave or you can leave and there's no repercussions that come along with that. So I think the standards for dating in general has changed so much that you can't even apply the same standards by which men used to date and court women as you do today. No, I, I hear I hear what you're saying. Um, and I mean, the, the rules of the game has changed, but I think it goes back. To, it it got to be both ways. I still feel like, I, you know, as a man, I don't want to be with no bum. Same way that, you know, women look at men like, hey, you know what? You a bum. You don't got no money. You don't got this. The thing is, is I feel like it has to be a level of rationale because you could say that, hey, let's say that I'm an entrepreneur. You know, I'm still building my business, my brand or whatever like that. So my finances, I still may be on the uptick of being able to build what I represent. But the thing is, it's kind of like from a woman's standpoint, I think men get self-conscious. They're like, hey, she's not going to check for me because I don't meet this criteria. But also, I'm unsure if women have this criteria either. Like you mentioned this, Anton, you said like, hey, they should, you know, before you enter a relationship, you should be kind of like financially stable. Hey, let's be honest. We talking about men is women and not financially stable either. So should they be entering a relationship? It goes both ways, man. Same rules. But see, that's that's what I'm saying. So so like I'll use myself as an example. Right. I've been married for 16 years. I got married when I was 22 years old. I've known my chick since we was in high school. Right. I was always in a space where I was financially stable, but it made it easier for me to be able to choose her as a mate because we were friends first. Like we were best friends. Without the relationship, we actually knew what each other stood for. So 
She knew exactly what my potential was. She understood. I knew that she wasn't with me because of how much money I was making, so on and so forth. Whereas the dynamic of today has changed because it's like guys are so desperate for chicks and chicks are kind of putting a price on themselves. And it's not built off of friendship. It's not a foundation behind that. So if you go into a relationship similar to what Carmen was saying, you know, she she mentioned that you know, whatever you start off with essentially is how you got to maintain. You got to keep that up. If you go into it, hoarding them based off of, okay, this is the standard and this is how I'm coming at you. It's unrealistic because you're going to go through things. And, and, and so if you don't have a foundation of friendship, you don't have a foundation that's built outside of being able to take care of her, even though you are financially stable, it's never going to sustain. It's never going to work because as soon as as soon as there's some trouble, then things are going to fall apart because you build it on sand. You didn't build it in concrete or bedrock. You built it on something that's not sustainable. So all of that kind of falls into the whole, are you dating with intention or are you just out here kicking it? You just trying to get what you can get or see what you can see. And that's on, that's on both ends because women feel the same way. You know, um, it, it's the same dynamic, right? With, the guys feel like the women will accept dates just to go to a fancy restaurant or whatever the case may be. But then on the flip side, the woman is probably thinking like he just want to hit. So it is what it is. And so that's where that foundation, what, what are you doing? Are you just out here trying to kick it and see what's, what's out there? Or are you literally dating with intention to find out who that mate is? And, and with that, you got to have a different set of a different mindset, a different, approach everything about the situation should be different to where you shouldn't be trying to off top impress with this big financial first date mm, do I, but like I mean it's, it's it's a really easy solution for all of that though which will never happen and that's really just everybody being absolutely transparent and honest about who it is you know what who they are and what it, what exactly it is that they're looking for if i'm looking to just be in a situation where it's a friends with benefits then I need to state that up front. And I think that women will truly respect you a lot more if we did that, but that does not happen. Everybody is putting on a representative. Everybody is trying to present a, a certain type of image. Everybody is on the gram and Facebook presenting themselves a certain type of way and nobody is being absolutely honest with who they are. So we go into it with the wrong expectations and, and false narratives because nobody is transparent and nobody is real about who they are. Yeah. And then you got people that don't really know what they want. So they're looking to social media. They're looking to movies. They're looking to TV to try to figure out what it is that they're even interested in instead of looking inside to say, okay, this is what's going to match what it is that I'm trying to do for my future. But first you got to know what it is that you're trying to do. Yeah, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree with that. But you know what? I think what we're talking about also like, Man, it's a level of maturity like folks got to have like on um, how they approach, you know, wanting to be in a relationship. I think it, they even mentioned in the chat, hey, like why even be in a relationship? I think folks need to, like you said, Anton, folks got to be honest with themselves. But you know what? That's actually the hardest thing for folks to do. I don't care what age yep. or what stage you are yep. in your life. Folks don't know how to be honest with themselves. So if you can't be honest with yourself, you bring in all that baggage, all that drama, all that immaturity into the situation, whether it's a long standing relationship, whether y'all in a dating stage or how we used to say the talking stage, like folks just folks immature. Like if you already entering in, like I need somebody to support me. Hey, that's immature. It's like, but also you got to blame the other person. Why enter a situation with somebody and they seeking out like finances or they really all over the place. It's like, is this a project that you are willing to put up with? Absolutely. Well, I guess the thing about it though, is if a girl comes into it and says, Hey, this is what my standard is. This is what my expectation is. I, I don't want to talk to a guy unless he make a hundred thousand dollars a year. And I'm just throwing out a hypoth hypothetical extreme scenario. Right. It's women I'm okay out there. with that. It's women out there. I, like I'm okay with that though. And the reason why I'm okay with that is because any guy that chooses to get involved with her know exactly what they're getting themselves into. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so that's a fair circumstance or situation. The problem that I have is when people have these, this, these expectations 
and then they go into it and then they be getting, they get jaded based off of their experiences when they never was honest about what it was that they was looking for the situation that they was looking, looking to get into in the first place. And that's what I'm saying with, with everything that's going on in this presentation and social media and everything. It's a lot of fake stuff that's being presented. So I don't even know how people date today with all of this nonsense that's being presented that's not really who, who we are. It's hard. <laughs> it's, well, it's hard. But I think folks make it hard because I think folks not honest. I mean, hey, so Anton, you mentioned this. So like, I don't know, I've been with Toy since that freshman year. I didn't have no money in college. I ain't had no money after I got out of college. It's like, I went through different yeah. stages in which I was able to say like, hey, I am financially able to support. But the thing is, I feel age has a, a, a role to play in this, but also where are you at in your life? If, you know, nothing against my guys, my fellas, but like, if you still at your mom's crib, or you still you shouldn't or, be dating, bro. Or, or low key, if you still got a roommate, nothing. Again, I know I'm dudes saying. that got roommates, but if you still got a roommate, that means you can't even afford your own rent. So that's what I'm saying, bro. You should not be dating. If you, if you are in this space, you should not be dating as a man. You sh and that ain't got nothing to do with oh, I need to take care of her or nothing. You can't even take care of yourself, bro. You can, you shouldn't be dating. Hey, but it's women out there that got roommates. I know y'all listening. It's That's women with roommates. Though. I'm gonna just tell you, I don't care what what the standard is. I don't care how much equalization and feminism. I don't care how much equal rights. I don't care how much my chick make. In my household, that falls back on me. If we not in the space that we supposed to be, and not not don't get me wrong, like she contributes significantly to to the growth of everything that we got going on and everything like that. But ultimately, I'm old school like that. I come from a family where, you know, I've never seen divorce. I got three brothers. None of them have ever been divorced. And they all been married for longer than me, for over 16 years. And I'm 38 years old. You know what I'm saying? My dad, he never got divorced. He passed away like two years ago. But my parents was married for over 30 years. You know what I'm saying? Like none of my uncles, they've never gotten divorced. So my standard for how men should conduct themselves and how, how they should lead their family it's completely different from what I'm seeing in society and especially in the black community today. It's almost like a free for all. Whatever happens, happens. Nobody wants to take accountability and responsibility for their circumstance and situation. And it's almost like you can just do whatever you want. And then the, and then the narrative becomes, well, don't judge me. No, nah, bro, you trash. You, sh you shouldn't be bringing chicks back to your mom's basement and you over 30 years old. You and know what I'm saying? Like you should run to that basement. And they shouldn't. But I, I can't. Who speak fault from is that? Female, is that the is that the man's? If, if a woman if a woman engages in that, then who fault is it? Like, it's, hey, it's, it may nobody, be like. But that. But, nobody, but here, I'm gonna answer that question specifically. I'm it's nobody that fault. directly. It's most toxic, toxic. No, it's, it's, toxic. The, it's the guys. Yeah. Fault. It's 100 percent the guys' fault. If you the over, guys fault. if you over, and I'm gonna tell you why. I'm listening. It's not when you're younger. Like when you're in your 20s, you do you do a little bit of everything. Whatever goes goes. Once you get to an age to where you mature and you have more understanding, you live life and you know what expectations are, you might have a kid or something like that. You got to throw all them excuses out, bro. I can't do anything like, yeah, I can take a chick back, but I shouldn't even want to. So it don't matter if she want to come back. I don't have to bring her back to my mom's basement. And if I do, what's the standard? You know what I'm saying? Like, what's my expectations? Yeah, I can use her as a jump off. But then we want to, you know, talk about and have all of these conversations about the black community and how we can empower each other. The way you empower each other is first doing it up here is through your own standards, it's through your own setting an example. I can't do the things that I wouldn't want my daughter to. I don't want to be the man that I don't want my daughter to marry. You see what I'm saying? So you have to set the expectation first through your own actions. And if you allow that to even come into your circle, it's your fault. You have to take responsibility and ownership of the situation. I don't care what happens in society. I don't care what the standards are. My standards are different and higher than what they are allowing to go on in society today. Simple as that. But the thing is, can you say like, hey, a woman should also have the expectations and standards and things that she they should. aspire to do? So the thing is, she I can't necessarily should. just say that's a, that's the man's fault. Hell, it's nope. both folks. It both is, people, in, based on what? It's his fault. No, because I mean, okay, these, so, are, these so are these you, societal norms, man. We think, just because of me, because think about it. We all grow up of being told as men to say like, hey, we got to provide, we got to do this, we got to do that. Hey, that shit is difficult as hell. It's like, man, you know how much pressure you got to deal with that you got to live up to some expectation for something that you you don't have the blueprint. You got to figure it out. So the thing but is, at the it's same like, time, 
you can't figure it out while also being responsible for and having somebody tagging along on your coattails. If you're going to figure it out or if that's your responsibility to figure out what life is truly about, I can't do that while also being responsible for another girl that I shouldn't be with in the first place because I know within my heart I haven't figured it out yet. I agree. Like, I just feel like it's on both parties. I don't think it's one-sided by gender. But I, and I, I agree with you. I just can't speak from a female's perspective because I don't – I'm me. You know what I'm saying? I'm a man. That's all I know. Right. But – I, I spoke on the female perspective and she should not be going to that basement for one. And- <laughs> <laughs> they are though. They are. We know it. Oh, they out. are. They As are a cool. grown woman, Nick can't invite me to his mama crib. Nick can't invite me to his roommate situation. Like I know off top, you're not in a space where I am going to be comfortable dating you. I'm not yeah, going to do true. that. So two things to that like I said I believe in both of those situations they both looking for love in the wrong place and the only the only thing that makes me agree with what you're saying Anton and obviously you got a totally different perspective from what you've seen with your own eyes growing up the reality is that there's a lot of guys that don't have that example so they are yeah, trying to figure, they are trying to figure it out and the, the the way that I put that on the onus right of the man is at the end of the day, if, we, if we're looking at what happened back in the day or whatever, if we're looking at that term and, and how men are supposed to be the leaders of the family, mm-hmm. how, can I, how can I follow, right, as a woman, if you lost? No, you're what right. You don't need me to. You're absolutely right. What, what so let me ask you. But to so the let base, me ask you something then. So let me ask you something now. At what age, right? Because you did mention something. You mentioned that it's a lot of us that, you know, we didn't have fathers growing up. We didn't have positive examples. We didn't have, you know, people to teach us and show us. And we just kind of had to figure it out on our own, right? Yeah. At what, but at what age or at what point in our life do we say, okay, that happened to me, but I have to be better or, okay, I know better now. So now I have to be responsible for myself. And take accountability for the actions that I that I take from here forward. You know what I'm saying? Because it's almost like it ain't no limit. Like if you 50 and you still being a, a trash bag dude, then hey, I ain't had no father going up. Like at what point is that that you throw that excuse out? Is all I'm wondering. I mean, I agree, and I wish it happened sooner than later. <laughs> because you do have a lot of 40 somethings that's still trying to figure it out. Like they may, they may have their careers. Set, but you still struggling with a lot of different internal things and a lot of trauma and a lot of different things that you've seen growing up or didn't see. And yeah. they're continuing to use that as their escape to yeah. make it okay with what they're doing. And so when it comes to that, the women have to set the standard, right? That's where we come into play. If there were more women that weren't accepting of these situations and would either not date or guide them into a different direction. Like at the end of the day, sometimes it don't just fall from the tree. One day you don't just wake up and say, as a man, I want to change. You know, you may have these thoughts, but you may not know how you may not know that first step. So then something in your environment has to trigger a desire to even change what it is that you're using as an excuse. No, I I agree. I agree with that. But Carmen, it goes back to like we talked about like folks got to know who they are and know they self and reflect. Hey, it ain't no age number to that. For some people, maybe 20 years old, 30. Hell, might be 50. Like, I mean, I figured it out. But a lot of this is trial and error. Like, I can't say I had my pops or whatever. Hell, my brother got married before my father did. I'm I'm my mama's only child, but seven of us all together. My sister literally grew up like six blocks away from me growing up. I didn't know that was my sister till I was 10 years old. So the thing is, it's like it's men out there that's grown as hell. My father included. I love you, dad, if you're listening. (laughs) Nonetheless, it's one of those like it takes time to figure it out. So, I mean, I think all of us go through different stages. And really, I think that sometimes you don't figure it out till you take that L. And once you take that L, you got to take the L and then, you know, learn, you know, lessons from them L's. You got to take them lessons. If you're not ready, ready to take a lesson from the L you took, then you're going to continue that same behavior. I, I, guys, I was just sitting there listening to you. And I, I noticed that you guys said that not everybody is always ready. I mean, it could be the age 40. It could be the age 50. 
It could be the age like 23. But sometimes I feel like certain people enter your life and it can't be a woman or a man. You know, they can't help you to grow to that point. What do you guys feel about that? Mm. Well, what role are they playing as far as that? You talking about like in a relationship, the, the woman? Yeah, well, it could start off as friends. I've seen people that are friends and then they wind up dating. And then like the fact that the woman had her shit together, like it kind of made sense for the guy to get his shit together. And now he become this person that he wasn't before because he had that woman in his life. And, and then this- vice versa, the same thing too. You know, like you may have a man that's willing to put that work in to help try to build up that woman. It's a lot of work. It's not for everybody because I've been in situations where I didn't want to take that time to actually uh, start off from scratch and try to raise that woman. And it sounds like season one and two of Insecure, man. (laughs) 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 Just saying. Yeah, but but how do you guys feel about it? but, But that's true. You do fall into a situation where you feel like you're raising somebody. So then if you got kids, you're raising an adult and a kid at the same time, like that shit is exhausting. It's exhausting. Yeah. You got to come halfway, come halfway, meet me halfway, literally. Yeah, but that's with dating. But in in life in general, you have a lot of people that are going through so much stuff because of traumas, like you guys said, or because of the way they was raised, or you know maybe they didn't have that role model to uh, you know follow in order to be that person. So then but, we have to I'm rely, good. you know, then we have to rely on the people, or either they got to have a strong mindset, a strong will to say I want to do better for myself. It's just like different variables that play into who we are today. You know, like I could have learned a lot of stuff from my mother, but I didn't learn everything. Then you got to kind of sit back and think like, well, you know, like how did I become responsible? Like, How did I know how to start saving money now? I don't know. I think it goes back to like, you know, what you willing willing to, to tolerate. Like we're talking about like if <laughs> do you want to be with somebody that's a project? And the thing is, it all depends on what stage you are in your life. Like if you also are kind of figuring yourself out and you with somebody else that you could see promise in this person along with yourself and y'all could build together, then that's y'all, y'all complimenting people. But if you feel like, Hey, I'm coming in with $150,000 salary and this person still living in the basement, that don't add up birds of a feather. It still makes a difference. It all depends. I think on what we willing to compliment each other and work together on. Sometimes it don't work out that well because we're folks from different worlds, man, they haven't figured it out yet. So then who wants to waste time? We all get to a certain age where it's kind of like, hey, I'm done taking these L's and not even my L's, but I'm not going to take an L on behalf of somebody else. Mm. I got <laughs> and you. that kind of circles back around to asking the questions up front, figuring out, dissecting that situation up front. We ain't got to go sit in no fancy restaurant for me to figure <laughs> out your energy and to figure out whether or not you're willing to grow as a person. I literally have had like a over 40 guy tell me like yo this what age i am i'm not changing yeah Thank, but like, that's no, fair though i'm with that though i'm okay not, with not that, knowing though. you though because there's things yeah about yeah and he gave you the option that wasn't that but wasn't see like i think that but that's the that the fact that he was very transparent who he was and what his expectations was and letting you know who he was right it gave you the option to say yes or no which basically eliminated all of the waste of time of you sitting there going and dating his representative and you know what I'm saying, dating somebody that you, that you may think has potential and you wasting your time instead of spending that time, you know what I'm saying, either becoming a better version of you or, you know, with somebody that's actually along the same page that you are. Whereas I just think that 98% of the solution is just being honest and transparent because if you give people options, if you give them the truth, and you give them the option to be able to say yes or no. I want to endure with you. I want to figure out who you was. I, I, I'll work with whatever your issues are and we can see this thing through together. That eliminates all of that time and all of that, you know what I'm saying, waste of dating and waste of money that people are doing versus just being real. And you know, ex- that's how me and my man. I'm telling you, bro. Hey, man, we're not so talking about your easier, situation, man. man. Cause you, you got to figure it out. Easy. Obviously, Anton, you had to figure it out at where well, you said age 22. You knew what you wanted. Hell, no, I, didn't. I didn't. I didn't know what I wanted. I didn't know. And that, but that was the thing. It was like, because I was so honest 
with who I was with her and she was absolutely transparent with who, who she was, even though we didn't know exactly what we wanted, mm-hmm. you know, we were more than willing to go through it together for our entire lives because we had expectations and then we were clear on exactly who it was that we were talking to. So it wasn't that we knew what we wanted because I'm a completely different person than I was 10, 15 years ago. But at the same time, you know, it's easy for us to be able to manage and, and, and see and work through each other's issues and problems and celebrate each other's triumphs because we know who we talking to. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no surprises and extra or, you know, she, let's just use an extreme example. And this is not me, but this is an extreme example. Let's say, You know, it's a lot of, I see a lot of talk online about open relationships, right? And (laughs) you the the type of person that want to be in an open relationship, right? You the guy, you want to be in an open relationship. She's not that type of person. But you go into this and you invest all this time on her and, you know, and you get her emotionally invested in a relationship. And then later on down the line, that's the conversation that y'all want to have because you really feeling this, you know, you need some time to go and talk to somebody else. That's unfair to her, only because you wasn't up front with it before she got emotionally invested in the relationship. Now, if you said that to her and she was like, yeah, I'm into that too, then that's a whole nother conversation. But because we keep creating these false narratives and then we expect people to just go along with it because you love yep. me, that's yep. trash. That's absolutely trash. Yep. You can solve 100% of these problems. And part, part of what I would add to that, Anton, is the fact that I bet at some part of you meeting your wife, right? And you guys building that foundation, I bet it came out how you viewed marriage, right? Because you had examples before you. Some of those family conversations came up. So you kind of know what a person is dealing with in their mindset from it. So you're more willing to grow with that situation as opposed to somebody that just... My my wife hated me. Like she, she... When we first met, she was like, I would never talk to a guy like you because I was just so blunt and upfront about who I was. She was like, you are trash. But then she came along to respect me because I was absolutely honest. And she realized that all of these other dudes was just trying to talk to her so they can get what they wanted out of her. She got lied to. Somebody lied to her before. (laughs) Yeah, but it it wasn't me. (laughs) Let me think. Pete got disconnected. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't so. know. Yeah, I guess we keep it going. But I don't know. It I I, I hear I hear both of y'all, man. It just I don't know, it's tough, you man. So, you sound like you're looking at it completely differently. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not gonna say a toy hated me, but the thing <laughs> is, like I look at it like going back to the core question where we started with about, you know, the woman is the prize. And if you're not, you know, financially stable, why enter a relationship? I was not financially stable. And it, my, I guess, path was a little bit different. Like we moved in together, but I, you know, I was in school when you in school, we oh, all know you don't got no um, 37. Okay. So the but thing you, is, but you were working on something though. You were working towards something, but true, but I didn't have it yet. I didn't have no money. So going back to we all been a student, I was broke waiting on a refund check once a semester. So the thing is, (laughs) like, that's that's cool. But when you start getting older, you know, we're not in undergrad no more. You start getting in your mid 20s. You damn near in your 30s. You still waiting on a refund check for some money that I'm going to have to pay back, which I'm doing right now. It's like, man, she could have just said, like, hey. I'm not waiting. I, I feel like I'm taking an L. I got to, in order for me to go out, I got to ask for money to go out. But the thing is, she stood by me. So the thing is, is one of those, like, going back to the question. Well, she, no, she, she, stood I by, wasn't, she stood by the person that she seen you become. Yeah, the potential. There's a difference. You the have potential. potential. So it goes back to a lot to, of people that's just riding away. Right. It ain't the same as you have but the potential. That's true. So that's why I think is it's levels to it, where it's certain variables that yeah, you got to right. consider because right. technically the question asks being financially stable. I was not financially stable. So the thing is, is like to your point, is like you still have to be emerging. You still got to say, like, hey, you know what, bae? Hey, whether you're a man or a woman, like, hey, I quit my job, but I got my own business. I'm doing me, as opposed to I quit my job and I ain't got nothing lined up. You know, Come that's on, that's the thing. I think it goes no, back to that's unreasonable. That's unreasonable people, for anyone. Well, that's the thing. I think it goes back to what are we willing to deal with? And do you see this person, the potential in the person? And sometimes 
we we down the sword waiting on that potential. That potential never evolves into the final product. It'd be like, damn, you wasted a lot of potential. True. And I wasted let my me, time waiting let, on let your potential. You let me ask you this, B, though. So while you guys were going through that process, right, initially, right, we in college, we don't got it like that, but were you upfront and honest about it? Were you creative? And I'm pretty sure she's looking at how you're handling that situation that's yep. going to make a difference of can you handle when you do make money, right? What, how we, yep. how we, if, if, if you fell off, right? If you were genuine and happy and still go getting it, right? You, you a go getter, you figuring it out, you waiting on that refund check, but guess what? You still doing work study or whatever the case may be. <laughs> like that's the yep. potential that you're looking at. You're not looking and fantasizing about potential. Like in my head, I want you to be a lawyer, but yet you man, you majoring in biology. Mm, that's true. Like, that's that's true. But I don't know, from a woman's perspective, I feel like, and, and I'm speaking more general, just not me, but just men, I'm unsure if men feel that women are willing to take a risk on them if they are not coming in already meeting this criteria of saying that I'm bringing in 100K or I'm financially stable. Because there's some men out there may say like, hey, I'm not financially stable right now. Some women be like, uh, you don't meet the criteria. You can't take me out. You can't do this. You can't do that. We can't go on trips, I'm okay so with we that. can't talk. Very true. Very true, but that's that honesty. If if that's the case, then that's not the woman for you. Right. If if they're not like my chick, but you gotta figure it out. It is women out there that will take that risk. It and it's women that won't. So at the end of the day, where you mean them at? My chick, my wife. And do you know enough about do you know enough about discernment to be able to figure out that ain't the route I'm trying to take. No, you're right. Well, you know what? Even going back to the chat, uh, JT talked about in the chat. What? How do we define financially stable anyway? Like, even though we're talking about it, but what does financially stable really mean to us? Like, far as our own criteria that we have on how we engage with somebody, on whether they're dateable or not, if that's a word. Mm. You get a word. Mm. Yeah, it'll I'm work. Not gonna, <laughs> dateable. I'm not even gonna jump in it. I'm not even gonna jump into that. I no, know, go ahead, Anton. See, like, like, get it off your chest, though, man. So get it off your that chest. That. <laughs> Let's talk about it. That's what we Cause, cause, you you know, over there breathing all heavy. I, go ahead and say it. Because if I say it, then they're gonna be like, you know, yeah. It don't realistic. matter. It don't matter. We here for the discussion. You know, I don't care how much money my chick make or don't make. None of that factors into whether or not I'm gonna have. I'm gonna be in a relationship. It never has and never will because I'm going to get all of it. And maybe it's just because, you know, I've been fortunate. I'll just use that word. I've been fortunate from a financial perspective to really, really do well within my business life and, you know, my corporate career and, you know, excelling up to vice president of a pretty large bank and things like that. So, you know, that don't money is not a factor and anything as it relates to what my expectations are from a woman like she don't it don't matter what she make i'm a, i'm 100 percent about character character is the only thing that that plays a role in a factor in whether or not you know a chick actually makes sense from my perspective so okay. it's different so, for me do you think you say are you saying that on behalf of anton or you think that men don't look at women like it's not about finances it's about like the vibe i think that in order for me to even answer this question, you got to look at it from a historical perspective, right? Historically, families came together because there was a need on both sides, right? Women were historically unable to make the type of money or even work in some circumstances. Let's just be real. Like just within less than what, 50 years ago, women were just able to vote. You know what I'm saying? So their ability to be able to be independent and successful a lot of their a lot of their resources were heavily dependent on men you know what i'm saying so the foundation of the family i look at it completely different if you look at just historically if you look at the stats like the fact that they introduced welfare or they introduced mm -hmm. you know all of these different programs for families completely tore fam it tore the black family apart mm -hmm. it made people less dependent on each other it gave them more options to be able to say okay i got an out now 
people go into marriage even today saying I got a plan B and if this don't work out, then I'll just be all right. Okay. I don't move like that. I move from the perspective that there is no plan B. The only the only plan is the one that we went into. And no matter what it takes, we going to die together. Okay. That's the end of it. You know, what well, I'm so, a, so let's let's I see. Car believe Carmen, I I'm not to cut you off, but I want to say like Carmen. So same question for you, you know, from a woman's perspective or you could claim it just your own perspective. But is money a factor? Is that part of your criteria before you engage in somebody being uh, dateable? <laughs> We're listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fair to ask for that question, bro. You well, no, I mean, what are we doing here? It's, it is you about the tough ask, questions. You can't ask. Go, go that, ahead, Miss Carmen. Yeah. So, oh, uh, oh. yeah, go ahead, Miss Carmen. You you gave us a nice answer, Anton. So, hey, let's hear what Miss <laughs> Carmen has to say. So, again, <laughs> for the folks in the back that ain't here, like so, oh, so Miss Carmen <laughs> is. Our, our finances or being financially stable, however you define it, is that your criteria when understanding or engaging if somebody is dateable for you or not? Or for so, women? So I take a more holistic approach to uh, dating, right? Okay. So you have to be knowledgeable or at least willing to get to the next level when it comes to me. So as long as you're a go-getter in terms of you got ideas, you got goals, you're striving towards something and you're working, like you're, you're bringing in a check, right? We can work with that. I'm not saying that you have to be rich. I'm not saying that you have to make 100K, but you, you have to have income, absolutely. And you have to have goals, dreams, desires to do something more that's going to take you to the next level. I don't I don't want to date someone that's complacent with being where they at. Because I'm not like that. I get bored easy. It'll be over. So it's like, what you know, what I'm saying, what, what are we doing? Are we are we in the same place we were last year or do we have a new idea to work towards something? Yeah. At the end of the day, like I'm not one of those women that feel like. I have to be care of 100%, but I do have to, especially emotionally, like I got to know that you're not just chilling while I'm busting my ass and you're not working towards something. No, that's so, yeah, real. You have to be paid. Credit has to be, you know, if it ain't where it should be, yep. at least be willing to learn about that process so that at the end of the day, we're not stuck in the same situation and we're not building wealth. Like, that's my goal. That's my personal goal. Like, I have to be able to build. And I'm not going to be able to do that with a person that's unwilling to learn, unwilling to increase their credit score, and will unwilling to learn about stocks, whatever the case may be. Like, Listen, money real. matters. I don't care what nobody but says. It, it money does. makes a difference. Well, it well, it doesn't. And that's what I'm saying. It, so it we got to balance it out. Like, I'm not saying that you got to come with it, but you at least got to be on board with learning. You yeah. at least got to be on board with with striving to do something more because yeah, nah, you know, Carmen, it depends. Listen, it, it depends on how old you are. At some well, point, you got to be like, all right, you gonna have to be have it together. I don't know. Well, real, I don't know. Man. But I think it, it does. Real. I'm actually in support of Carmen, where it's like I look at it that you know I think for both men and women, hey, it is about you know the financially stable piece. But how we define it is like, how are you able to say that I have an income? I have a dependable income coming in. Whether that may be if I'm an entrepreneur and I have like my own ebb and flow of I have cash flow coming in some some weeks more than others or I get mm -hmm. a biweekly, a weekly check. So the thing is, hey, we may not make the same amount. I don't think anyone in life is going to say like, hey, me and my partner, we make the exact same amount and we meet in the middle. When folks talk about equity, I think it's about what well, being equitable. It's about a hey, being equitable with saying like, hey, you know what? This is what I'm contributing toward the crib. And this is what I'm bringing. Hey, I'm bringing in more money, so I'm able to support more. So I think it is, it's about those two people in that relationship, like what they can bring, whether they bring in potential and money or they bring in money. But as long as both partners know that, hey, they're striving. I think that's something that Carmen mentioned about striving toward yeah. building the brand and building it together, not separate. You know, because the thing it is, is I'm, not a fan of potential. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of potential, but mm -hmm. a desire and, mm -hmm. and how that's playing out. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But 
I ain't, I ain't wishing for nothing. If I got to see it, I got to see it in action. I got to see it somehow. Well, hey, hey, like JT said on the chat, one of the things is like what what happens with divorce? People mainly divorce over money. And she, I say money over cheating. Cheating, hey, folks get over cheating. They usually do. money You're helps right. to patch yeah, it up. Right. <laughs> but yeah, usually right. money is the main Absolutely. thing. And we see it. Folks may lose their job. We may be seeing it right now. I think on the news, they were talking about domestic cases that went up because of COVID-19. So the thing is, folks at home and like, hey, the money ain't flowing the way it used to flow. I can't do this. So I think that's something that, but Anton, you mentioned it earlier. Folks got to be real with themselves, man. Folks got to have realistic Listen. expectations. Listen. And I think that's the biggest variable. Folks are not real with themselves or their partner. They just play the game. Guys date down, women date up. Okay. You think so? I know so. It's 100% true. Guys date down, right? Put it like this a guy will meet whatever expectation a woman has for him. If a woman says, you know what? I don't really get down like that until the fourth date. He gonna work to the fourth date, right? That the the goal is for day four, date four. That's the goal, right? Women date up. They have expectations for men, and men date down. They look to meet the expectations of whatever it is they need to achieve that goal. That's just the reality of it. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Then you're trying to understand what is this relationship really? In my relationship, for example, yeah, I, I try to empower my chick to do whatever it is that makes her feel good. If she want to work, that's what she can do because it makes her feel good. If she want to do volunteer work and never want to go into a job, I'm 100% with that because it, you know, it helps her and she br she's bringing value in a different way, not only to us, but to herself and to society or whatever. But Money matters. And she has an expectation for me. If I start getting down and I'm like, you know what, man, I'm feeling a certain type of way. I'm feeling depressed. She know that I expect for her to come to me and say, Anton, who are you? You ain't, that, that ain't what I married. Get yourself together because this ain't, you know, this ain't what the, what the, what the move is. This ain't who we are. You know what I'm saying? You a better person because you get out there and grind, grind. You know what I'm saying? And so I look at relationships and my expectations are different because maybe my experiences and seeing what I've seen throughout my lifetime, as far as my different examples and the people that I've surrounded myself with, their expectations are different. Yeah, we have great expectations for each other. Yeah, hey, That has what? a lot to do with it. And in, in addition to that, like you set the tone for that. That goes back to 100%. what I first said. You set the tone for that. So yeah, as a woman and she sat and watched you throughout all these years be that person, you can't change up now. You're 100% yeah. right. So hey. yes, it's unacceptable to be depressed and, and down and not wanting to push forward when that's not who she saw. So of course Listen, she's going to build you. My daughter, I got a 12 year old daughter. I said I was only going to have one kid. I was going to put everything into her and everything like that. I wanted a daughter. I got her. I named her after my mom because my mom never had a daughter. She always wanted one that she had four boys, right? Mm -hmm. My 12 year old daughter looks at men differently, right? She, when she's experience. interacting with her cousins, yeah, when she's interacting with her cousins, you know, cause she's like, oh, you a beta male, you weak. You know, she'd call them out. Like her expectations when she's talking to her friends on the phone and they, they FaceTime and everything like that. And she's like, Oh, I don't even know why y'all and the boys like y'all should be focused on y'all schoolwork. He only gonna like you because you giving it up. I'm not even gonna start dating until I'm at the high school because the guy should have higher expectations. Like her mentality towards guys are different. Her expectations, yeah. what she requires from even the friends that surround her are different, and it makes them raise their standards because she's raised her standards according to what it is that she's witnessing on a daily basis. I'm telling you, it's all how yeah. we think. It's what our expectations are and how we showcase those expectations. If we have low standards, then we're going to get trash yeah. people. Hey, but you know what? Hey, I, I hate to backtrack a little bit. I feel a way about the uh, date down, date up thing. Why? Yeah, I'm not. Why you, why like, you, why yeah. you I, I knew it was going to be a problem. I don't, I, hell the I, fuck I, yeah, it's a problem. I'm yeah, I could even, dude, I could even pay attention to nothing else you just said <laughs> the past five, ten minutes. <laughs> I was okay, trying so to fix my face because I'm on camera, but no, oh, man, no, something. date down and date up. Like, just because you a man, okay. I got to date so, down. No, 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 no. So tell, that's no, what I you said. You have to. I didn't say you have to. You said, said that's, that's what men what do. Happens. 
That's it's happened. not. It's not the case. I, dis- I disagree. No, no, no. So you're gonna, you're gonna know always have. Was, I didn't know whether or not that was a standard. No, no, no. No, I'm that's an standard. The majority. majority. I'm I'm talking about the majority of what I see. Listen, why do we go to strip clubs? Why do we go to strip clubs? I'll tell you exactly why, why we go to strip uh, clubs. Go, go ahead. It's because it's go available. We're going to do whatever is available, whatever is allowed for, and I'm not obviously, I can't put a blanket statement on everybody. So it's not every single person, but the overwhelming majority of men do what they're, what's available for them to do. That's just the absolute truth. Yeah, Real but talk. I mean, but I mean, I get that and I disagree. But the thing is, it's like, <laughs> the- no, 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 you can't skip over it. Why you disagree? For one, I look at it that whether you're a man or woman, I feel like folks still have like the same equal opportunity, equal rights to do whatever they want. The thing is, I feel like that plays into the whole gender bias. And that's the gift and the curse of us saying that men do this, women do that. The thing is, you mentioned earlier about historical perspective. I get that. But guess what, Anton? We not from that era. We didn't grow up back then. So you're speaking about not true in 2020. See, you're you're saying what? It's not true to me. No, no, you can't say it's not true to me. No, I I just did. I'll say it again if you didn't hear me. It's not like it's not true to me. The thing is, the whole gender bias, the dating down and dating up. The thing is, like, I want my I want my my daughters to already be up. They shouldn't have to feel to like, oh, like somebody dating down to me in order to accommodate my feelings like women or some of these vulnerable creatures or whatever. They got the same common sense that men have. I know you I hit me with you how, said the historical. Know. I know no, no, you're no, no, gonna no. say I'm this. talking about you. I'm not talking about historically as far as men. Historically, okay. in your life, as an example of who you are up to whatever age you are now, and I'm not just talking about if you're in a current relationship or not. In your life, historically, as your actions as a young man, as a man, as you've grown, have you taken advantage of the circumstances that's been afforded to you? You speaking about privilege, so I think we all do. No, it in a certain sense. you know what I'm. No, talking it's about. gender privilege, right? We talk about white privilege, oh, it's gender privilege too. So you talking about it from male privilege, right? Because you the man, right? I'm talking. I wasn't supposed the... to say that out loud. No, you <laughs> say that. I'm just saying you you avoided the question because you did not answer it. Ask me again. No, I, I asked you the first time. In your life, have you taken advantage of the circumstances or the opportunities that's been awarded to you? as it relates to women in relationships. Because I'm a man, what type of advantages? No, I didn't say because of anything. I said, have you done it? I want to say, yeah, but I can't say what advantages I done taking taken advantage of. I mean, <laughs> because of what? I mean, what am I taking advantage of? What's my leverage? I mean, you could say, I mean, you could say the same thing. You could make the argument based on skin tone. Did you take advantage? Mm. Do you take advantage based on height? Do you take advantage based on finances? Do you take advantage based on how you was raised? All that. We all have different advantages. The subject that we have in a conversation about is very common. The subject that Pete brought up from the very beginning was expectations from a man as it relates to going into a relationship financially, Mm -hmm. right? That narrative is being spoken of from a woman's perspective of her expectations from a man. You never hear the conversation say, hey, man, what's your expectations of a woman? Now, it may come every once in a while, but the overwhelming majority of the conversations or the questions that's being asked as it relates to expectations come from women. Men yeah, don't but, have that conversation but because no, well, see, that's we the don't, problem, though. Ne- wait, that's wait, wait, the, wait. That's the problem, we though. We don't have that conversation because we generally don't have an expectation because in a general sense, we date down. We so, go and get what's available. Well, I, I to got us. an expectation though. Men, I do. You don't see women. You don't see women going to approach men in the general sense. You see men approaching women. Men are chasing women. You don't. And women are having an expectation um, for the type of men. I feel it's a little different though, bro. I feel it's a little different. And I'm speaking in a general sense. I'm not talking entirely, but in a general sense, women have an expectation for a guy talking to them. Men have an expectation for the woman that he, or not an expectation. Men are the ones that meet the expectation and approach women. That's the truth. So when you say men date down, 
What do you do. specifically? No, I'm, no, I'm being, no, I don't. I, I'm speaking figuratively. I'm not saying that women are the lower species or anything like that. I'm saying that men don't generally set an expectation for a woman. They look to meet an expectation in order to find a mate. Women have an expectation in a general sense from the type of men that they want to talk to or men that they wouldn't even give the time of day. Real talk. I don't and know. So I, it's I still almost, disagree. I mean, that's I fair. You can. No, I do. I do. I feel you at like because you're the way you're saying it. You make it seem like men have no expectation going into this, whether it's finances or whatever, no. because we tend to date down anyway. You know, whether you're talking about it from being figurative speech or historical speech or whatever. I disagree with that. The thing is like, hey, I want somebody to be my equal. Right. So the thing is, I want somebody to match me. So if I'm looking for somebody to but match me, that means you know, women staying... say that, though. You never hear women say, I want them to be my equal. You hear women say, this is my expectation for a man. You never hear a woman say that out of her mouth. She's not saying I'm looking for somebody to be my equal. And that's what, what I'm saying. We like, never say yeah. a woman needs to be here and all of this. That's not the conversation. You, you're exhibiting it in everything that you're saying in your conversation. I don't know. So it's I not don't... a gender bias. It's something that you showcasing right now in this conversation. Well, I want to say, like, my relationship is equal, you know, and I aspire for it to be That's equal. That's cool. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be 100 percent 50 50 split down the middle, whether it's finances, whether it's, you know, support or whatever. The thing is, I feel like in order for a relate and that's part of the problem, because we do come at it from this one sided perspective. But we show historically to that point. Yeah. Like that's just like the role of, oh, yeah, a woman, like you said, like, oh, a woman, should, if she wants to volunteer or whatever, that's fine. The thing is, I want to say in most cases, hey, both people got to bring something to the table like hey, finances, mm -hmm. not saying everybody got to be bringing in 100 K. But like, hey, mm -hmm. we no longer live in a society where folks can be dependent upon one income. Even though we're talking about finances, we focus on financially stable. I feel like both folks have to contribute. Now, as far as what they contribute, how much they contribute, that may vary, mm -hmm. whether it's the man or the woman mm -hmm. based on the job and a situation. But I don't know. I just my thing. I just took offense not to you, but mm -hmm. to the statement about the date down, because then it makes it seem like I'm marginalized a woman that, you know what, I'm above them. And that's the part that I, I interpret it that way. Hey, but you know what? The thing about it is that the very idea that I can say it's okay for me to work and for my chick to volunteer, it, that's okay. Like, that's a that's an okay safe statement for me to say I will, would never get in trouble. Nobody would ever be like, Anton, you crazy, or that's wrong, and you should never do that. Yeah, the conversation would probably go a little bit different if it was reversed. If I, if I was like, you know what, I want you to work and I just want to volunteer, like that's going to be a conversation that's, that's being had. So my point is, is that me saying that is not necessarily saying that is right or wrong. Of course, I have my opinion about whether it's right or wrong, well, but it doesn't make it any less true based off of well, how things are going in society. I, I say this, it whether it's a man, whether it's a man or a woman, to me, it's like if somebody wants somebody submissive to kind of date down, whether a woman dates down, if you're intentionally looking at it, my expectation, I'm historically, I date down. That means I'm looking for somebody that I can control. I can control the finances. I can control the Not decisions because I'm looking for somebody to be submissive. And hey, Gino, I know true. you mentioned it in the chat, but the thing is, I think from my perspective, that's how it is. When I'm dating down, that means that I'm trying to control the situation because now I'm saying like, oh yeah, I'm dating somebody that's beneath me. Well, there's no, financially beneath me. I don't know. That's the way I interpret it, bro. No, that's fair. I mean, that's fair. I, I, res I respect that. I respect your perspective. As <laughs> I don't know. I don't think to... you do. I mean, I hear your voice getting a little high. And you no, 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 I do. I do. I voice gets high. I mean, like, yeah, whatever. All right. You know, I but... think this is the beauty in conversation, right? Conversation is the, is the fact that I can hear what you say and be completely open minded to it. You know what I'm saying? In order to better understand. Maybe you teaching me something that I may not necessarily know. And that's, again, that's the conversation. I think this, this platform is awesome because, because it's not a debate. It is a conversation. I'm saying something that you thought about and you was like, I don't know, that rubbed me the wrong way, right? You took that in and then you said, you know, gave it back out as far as giving your perspective. And now I'm taking it in and I'm digesting it. I, I, I do, I respect everything that you're saying. I think there's no. Well, thank you, brother. The man. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. I, I, I know you said right. you look like I was feeling a certain type of way. I'm not. I think I think that's dope that you're expressing it. Yeah. Out no, I think I felt the way. I think in I own that. Fairness, in all fairness, I felt the way too. It was like, wait a minute. <laughs> Jake, okay, damn. so so Carmen, Miss Carmen, what's your perspective? Because uh, uh, the he said his. I want to hear why you felt a certain type of way about it. Well, that's the reason why I asked. Like, what are we specifically talking about um, when you say dating down? So, mm-hmm. is that from a financial standpoint? Because I know plenty of women that they've made more than the men that they've dated, and the men were insecure about that in some way, shape, or form. It shows up in a different. In a different way, but it's again. a reason why they're insecure. You you don't see girls get insecure about their man making more money. You see guys a lot of times getting insecure about their chick making. That's that's what I'm saying. When I'm saying it, I'm not but saying it as it pertains to any specific any specific subject, whether it's finances, whether it's the roles in the household, who stays home. Who, I'm not saying it as it relates to any specific thing. I'm talking about the mentality. The mentality is when certain things happen or the mentality amongst men versus the mentality amongst women, the very idea that we always have a conversation or it's a subject behind, you know, whether or not a guy is okay with a chick making more money than him versus you never hear that as a subject or a headline as far as is a girl okay with a guy making more money. That never happens. And so like we can take offense to it, but it doesn't change the reality of the situation. Like if we being honest, this is the narrative. There's certain expectations for men and how women look at men. And there's certain expectations for women. How, you know, it's the it's, 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 it's not it's not that far fetched. Like, yeah, we can get offended at it, but it doesn't mean it's well, any less true. I get it. But I think that narrative is changing. I don't I don't I don't uh, align myself with that that narrative. And if anything, I was just talking about this earlier, the fact that, like, let's say you know, for a woman that's an entrepreneur. And you mentioned about some guys that are vulnerable because of this mindset that like, hey, I'm the provider, I'm this. I feel like in some cases, men have this own vulnerability where I meet a woman that is my equal, that is able to provide her own, that now like, well, what role do I play? And I think that this goes back to men being sensitive of having this vulnerability because they're they're not the breadwinner. They're not the ones we, that's we're really supposed taking- to be vulnerable. We're supposed to be vulnerable. That that's just a natural. It's almost like is it unnatural for a woman to feel physically less strong than a man, or is that just a part of what her character and her and the nature of a woman is? She's physically not as strong as a man. Like, it doesn't matter how we feel about it or how we try to equalize things. There are certain things that will never be equal. My chick, no matter how much she goes to the gym, will never be as physically strong as I am. That's just the truth. I don't care how you spin it. So it's it's not it's not weird in my perspective for a guy to feel a certain type of way when all we've ever known. And the first thing that we was taught as young kids as the is the first responsibility of a man is to provide and protect. So now. That whole thing gets upended as I get older, right? And I'm starting to feel a weird type of way because naturally, as it relates to how I was raised and my physical characteristics, I can't relate to that if I see a chick is, you know, taking taking, or is in a position that I feel like I should be in as it relates to a relationship. It don't, it's something that I may need to get over, but it doesn't make it any less natural for me to feel that way considering that I am a man. Well, yeah, I get it. And if anything, like you said, this space itself, it gives us the opportunity to talk about it because like, shoot, if anything, most of the people growing up have been women. That mean, my mama right. raised me, man. Right. I, as, so right. who, no, right. who owned the house? Who paid the bills? Who went to work? You who picked right. me up? So the thing is, I can't necessarily say like that's the role of men because growing up, I can't say it was that many men. Even think about going to school. How many men you see teach? It's mainly women that teach. So you see women awesome. in these leadership that's roles. Though. But you're saying that from the perspective of a person that, you know, you you've seen that. All like I indicated very early in the conversation, all I've known in my entire life is men operating in a certain type of way that was all around me. I'm not familiar. I'm familiar with you know interacting in society, but in my everyday life, in my house, and, and everything like that, all I've known is super strong men that endured and were willing to see things through to the end. They didn't believe in divorce. You know what I'm saying? They didn't believe in, you know, needing 
needing their wives in order to meet an expectation for them to be financially in a certain space. They never worried about that. Now the women, yeah, they did do what they wanted, wanted to do, but they were never dependent on that. The health of the household from a financial perspective never fell into that category. So I don't know that. I've never known anybody as a single woman in my family raising a kid. Well, I don't know that. Fast forward and then fast forward, life changed for a lot of other people. And that's the norm. The guys are looking for women to pick them up. But it only became the, the norm because of our ring. inability and our unwillingness <laughs> to meet a certain expectation. I honestly believe that. But I mean, even that, who whose expectation are we trying to fulfill? Ours or something that a society well, that's the thing. or people when you from get years married, ago when you get married or you have a kid, is no longer about you. It don't matter about how you feel or what you think your expectations are. Nobody asks to be brought into the world is your responsibility to take care of it. You know what I'm saying? And it's like- But then, but then take, a, take a look at what's happening now, right? You got married mm -hmm. very young, mm -hmm. he's married, but yep. are the single guys right now looking to get married or are they looking for someone to date, have a good time with and help out? Yeah, that's true. You're right. You are 100% correct. It's not I a agree. lot of single men that are like, I'm just trying to find my wife. Like, they're not talking like that. Like, no. Well, I think yeah, it then goes back to true. like, folks got to, like, Anton, right. you mentioned it in the beginning. Folks got to be honest with themselves first. So yep. you can't necessarily enter a situation when you're still trying to figure out what, what role do you play on this earth or in this relationship or what, what type of person do you want to be with, you know? Because, but isn't that times, ironic though, though? Mm -hmm. That you you trying to figure that part out, but you're not trying to figure out whether or not you still want to have sex with her. Like, <laughs> isn't that ironic though? Like, it's okay for us to make excuses and say, or give a pass and say, but you know what? He was still trying to figure himself out, but he wasn't trying to figure himself out that much when it and came to moment. certain things. So it's like, come on, man. Day. At some point, you got to be real and you got to take responsibility for your circumstances because. You made the decision to do whatever it is that put you in the space that you're in now. That's just the truth. Well, you was man enough to lay down with her, but you just wasn't man enough to figure out whether or not you wanted to commit to her for the rest of your life. Come on, man. Hey, what well, it goes that? well, did it goes back to how we started? Like, who's the prize, right? The thing is, I think it takes two. You know, I don't I know the question presented itself like from a very kind of one-sided perspective, but I feel like hey. Did finances play a role when you laid down? I don't know. So then that goes back it to that individual person. I mean, it yeah. It <laughs> hey, depending on what mood every, you was in that night. Every single thing, <laughs> every single thing that comes as a result of you laying down should have played a factor in whether or not you laid down in the first place. It hey, should have played a factor. No, and I if, agree. And if, and if it doesn't, then we focus in on the wrong problem. The problem should be you know, we should be trying to get to the root of what the issue is and start instead of trying to remedy or treat it as we go along. We 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 addressing so many issues instead of diving into what the, the real problems are and the root of where these things and these insecurities and these issues and people trying to find themselves like we not really tackling. And I'm not talking about on this specific this specific, mm -hmm. you know, talk, but just as a community. I don't think that we're really asking the right questions and tackling the right problems at their root. I just really don't. No, no, that's real, man. Really? Well, hey, I know we've been on here for a minute. Um, I don't know what happened to our host, I feel JR. Bad about, I feel bad for him. I don't. <laughs> the computer. Now, I don't feel bad for JR at all. Like, but I know. But nonetheless, it's been a, it's been about an hour. And hey, one thing I want to say to Jillian, hey, I'm sorry if I said chicks. That was a microaggression. I meant women. So I'm sorry if that was offensive I language. I own it. Times. I own it. So, I but times. okay, maybe she was talking to you. <laughs> so, but um, before we close, any uh last remarks? We'll go with uh Miss Carmen, Anton, and then I close us out. Um, I just want to thank you guys for allowing me an opportunity to partake in the conversation. Um, again, it's not a whole lot of um young black men that are married, so it's it's um, leaving to to get to married perspective from from men. Um, and yeah, stop thinking that you know men are dating down, Anton. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Fine. 
Jam. Y'all gonna think about this. Y'all gonna All right. go. All right, go ahead, Anton. You, you got the, the floor morning. now. You got the floor. Closing <laughs> remarks. Go ahead. I'm about to. Yep. I go ahead, Detroit. Go. I think. <laughs> I think when y'all go back and y'all y'all start thinking about you know replaying this video or thinking about a lot of this conversation that's being had, I think we're gonna tr we're gonna start uncover uncovering some of the real issues and truths instead of putting band-aids on it by putting labels on things and things like that. I think the main thing from a guy's perspective is that your expectations should be exactly what it is that you bring. Don't expect anybody to bring anything or do anything that you wouldn't first go about doing yourself. And that's just my biggest thing. Be, be real and a hundred percent honest with people. You'll get better results as you know, you might, feel a little you know some type of way about being honest and having certain conversations and when you're having these conversations with women and saying hey this is who I am this is how I move is this something that you're okay with you might feel a little uneasy about it because it takes training it takes you know you rethinking how you move and how you approach people in a general sense but I think ultimately you'll get better results and you'll find yourself weeding out the people that you don't necessarily need to be with or around in the first place and surrounding yourself with people that'll that'll either make you a better person or are willing to endure with you to see to see certain situations all the way through. No, I agree. I mean, if anything, just um, just to piggyback off that point, just really it's about, you know, folks want to say they, you know, being 100. It really is about being 100 with yourself first not just about looking at it from how we define financially stable individually, but also like, what is your purpose? I think, uh, Carmen, you mentioned this in the beginning where we were saying dating with purpose, you know, dating with intent. So if you're just dating and you have no purpose and no intent, then really you're not just wasting the person's time, but you're wasting your own time too. So, um, just want to thank y'all for tuning in. Um, JR. Awesome. Hey, hit my line after we done, bro. <laughs> Let me know what's going on. But uh anyway, as JR would say, um, thank you for tuning in to La Peace. <laughs> Let's talk. Yeah. All, All right, right holla at y'all. All right. <laughs>